Hey there, and welcome to the Adam and Cup group round action in the Gaia Hack group. My name is Chief Launcher, and today we have Step Lively at 1 and 3, and Klopfer at 2 and 2 on your left and right, respectively, fighting for that third place spot in the Gaia Hack group. The all important third place spot gets you into the play in. Uh, but behind the top two uh, runners in the Gaia Hack group, one ex Pancras, ever heard of him, and my co commentator, Mike Mike34. Mike Mike, uh, Step Lively, and Klopfer are two really talented runners you faced off against. Uh, how do you kind of handicap this match tonight? Uh, first, I want to stop by saying ha, 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 and uh, to answer your question. Uh, it's going to be a, a really good race. Like, uh, Klopfer has been running sub 130 times pretty consistently, so uh, really top tier. And Step is uh, upcoming Pink Puff, who actually hit go mode in her race against Pink Crest before he did. So I'm expecting a good race tonight. Yes, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, we w do want to thank our tracker, Chazman89, for the uh, wonderful objectives and for uh, pushing all the buttons. And uh, our restreamer, Bad Karma, uh, for bringing us all this action. Uh, our runner starting with a young tonight and an interesting set of objectives uh, today here, Mike. Uh, Pink Tail and Rat Tail required a required harp and uh, a bunch of uh, uh, summon bosses required. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sheet, but uh, is the moon in this game? I, I don't know. The, the moon might not be in play here. No objectives require the moon or even the darkness crystal. But as we know, chances are we're going to have one or two items buried somewhere up on the moon, uh, requiring us to come back to the blue planet. Yeah, there are uh, many uh, terminal items required. The uh, pink tail, the legend sword, the adamant the sand ruby. Uh, and with all of those key item checks up on the moon, it's, it's likely that uh, at least one of them will be somewhere up there. And with Yang starting, um, how do you feel about that? And who are we looking for for a complimentary character? You know, uh, Yang is is kind of at a disadvantage in these uh, flags with so many so many more powerful characters uh, available. Yang gets off to a slow start. He needs some time. He needs some care. Uh, so it will be uh, it will be interesting to see. Um, I would like to see. Uh, somebody who could uh, help carry Yong along a little bit in the early game. Maybe a Sid uh, would be a, a nice, uh, a nice addition. Or you know, lead into it, get a Quack Kid or something, and and have them grow together. But uh, we are underway. We're glad to have you with us. Well, how about a Rosa and a Dark Knight Cecil? That is nice, and a hook right away. All right, we'll be seeing uh, if they're checking that hook character or doing an early dive. Um, I've seen Klopfer do some pretty early dives, so this will be interesting. Yeah, it depends how uh, how aggressive you want to be. Uh, Mike, Mike, you know, if you're in the runner's position where you know you need a win in order to cement your place uh, in the play-in match, uh, would you want to uh, focus on getting uh, the things you can done, or would you want to start playing aggressively? Well, I'm looking for uh, an advantage. I don't know how well he, these two have scouted each other. Um, but we're going to see uh, some Eblin looting from uh, Step, which we're hoping to pull some of that T Wildish Max Tier 7 goodies out of here. Well, uh, Klopfer, who's done uh, a lot of this uh, Damison treasury here, and walk away with some very key items in prior matches is kind of sticking to the tried and true. Let's get a rune ring, uh, which will uh, fit nicely onto that Rosa for now. And we see Step uh, kind of waiting a second to take a look at what uh, monster fight she got in case she wants to come back here. On hook routes, a popular play is to uh, take some of these fights and get some of that trap chest loot, which can carry uh, some of your tier 8 items as well as one of those being the adamant armor. Yeah, we have seen some seeds where there were adamant armors uh, at play in 
Evelyn Castle. Uh, and Step Lively finds a Gaia hat, an interesting uh, pickup if there's an early uh, Black Mage somewhere available. Yeah, and I, I can tell you right now, she is ecstatic about having found that Gaia hat. <laughs> you know, you got to do it for the memes, if nothing else. And the three wisdom. Yeah, Clopper is heading over and checking that free key item, which is uh, a part of this set. You don't have to find Demis, there's no boss hunts. You can just write, run right to Bedward and get your free pass. So that'll save us a uh, Lunar Subterrane trip later. It will, and uh, you know, who knows? The moon might not be required at all. Oh, and Step Lively picked up an Artemis bow from uh, from Ebley Castle. Uh, that Rosa can turn into a Berserk Warrior if Step Lively wants her to. Yeah, with a young start, you really want something to, to get you going power-wise, and that Artemis bow is is one of the top things you're going to find right now. Also, um, I believe I saw a Runax, uh, which could come into play later. It's nice to have uh, anti-mage gear, for sure. Yeah, definitely, especially uh, since uh, one of the trap chests in Eblin is the three Mad Ogres chests, which a Runax can make them trivial. Also, uh, lots of otherwise annoying bosses can be cut down to size with uh, Mage Mashing gear, uh, such as Ru a Rude Spot, Mega Sisters, or Ashura. Looks like before uh, Klopfer hits his uh, blin, uh he finds some camping gear, uh, cabins, and some stewed carrots. Now, are, are they necessarily stewed? I mean, there are so many better ways to have carrots. Like roasted on a stick? <laughs> I like to imagine the uh, the fat Jokuba likes to eat carrots on a stick like a marshmallow. Oh, yeah, that's that's a great point. He just pops <laughs> up in your camping location. I bet you feel pretty safe and also comfortable with a, with a, a big cockaboo there. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, fat Jokuba, tell us a story around the campfire. People keep giving me crystal swords. What is wrong with them? <laughs> or however, you know, they talk. Yeah. I like to imagine a fat chocobo sounds like a tuba, just because of their theme. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, perfect. Exactly. <laughs> They're kind of crossing each other's uh, steps right now. Uh, Step Lively now going to pick up the pass, and uh, Klopfer is wrapping up his, uh, his Eblin dive and then we might get a look I would imagine at the Hobbs character yeah uh, Young and Rosa can uh, pack a pretty good punch in the mid game but uh, for now they need just a little bit of help before uh, you can start uh, taking on much of the overworld uh, you know this team wouldn't have a problem with most bosses in the Antlion Cave for example but um, I think uh, our runners are, are cognizant enough that uh, once they start making overworld checks, uh, they're going to want to try and steamroll through the overworld. Absolutely. And with a with a charm arrows, we could see uh, with a hook route a couple opportunities at taking down some uh, ogres pretty quickly. Uh, should they try that? Yeah, the uh, charm arrows uh, paired with an Artemis bow uh, the uh, some of the trap chests should be not a big deal. I like that the, the mute pickup from the weapon shop first step. That's they had both a mute knife and uh, mute arrows. Um, very nice to have. We also and, have a bandana for some plus strength gear and a tiara for that Rosa as well. Yeah, it's a uh, it's. It, Best on on Rydia because it gives wisdom, but it does give you some defense boost, and it's going it's really good uh, to try to avoid uh, Z uh, multipliers in the final fight. But that seems like a problem for future runners. Right now, they have uh, a lot of overworld checks and uh, uh, the potential of the hook route staring them in the face. And Klopfer is going to dive into uh, Cave Evelyn, going to check the shops, going to check the character, 
Uh, also, check the chest and getting really lucky with a uh, with a really early find of the stalemate. Yeah, you love to see that early because that opens up the whole place uh, for you to loot without having to worry about saving or maybe getting an unlucky open in the middle and having to reset after you're doing your shopping. So now he can go, he can shop without worrying about it. Uh, doesn't have to even save unless um, unless he's going to try to dive down. We'll see who the character is. And even go into the infirmary with no fear, uh, which is the worst place to <laughs> see a trap chest. Yeah, sometimes you walk into the infirmary, infirmary and you never leave. <laughs> I saw I... some coffins in that item shop. Uh, that can be helpful for trap chest too, and for you know dark imps or various bosses. That is a loaded item shop. Ethers, elixirs, star veils, and coffins. Elixir is probably a little bit too expensive uh, for our runner's taste, but it's always nice to know where they are. Uh, coffins, you were uh, saying, very useful. Star veils, you get a couple when you start, but uh, you always want to have a couple more on hand for a rude boss. And uh, we see a, a Ogo in Antlion, which is a really good spot. You, you, the earlier you see Ogo, the better, because he has less time to wreck your day. And did, we didn't hit on this, but... Did Step have a, a Thai naming sheet? Oh no! Oh boy! That's how you. Uh, that's how you uh, tempt the gods here. Uh, so why is Step rooting for a tie here, Mike? Ah, well, uh, a victory for Step uh, is very important because not only does it give her a chance to to get, in, she's will be in a, a three-way third place tie for, for her and Clawford, but also gives Neon Grey right back into contention too. So she's not just playing for herself, uh, she's playing for them. And I did also see, uh, we got a Palum in Clawford's uh, screen who, with stop, can help f him fight uh, that Dark Elf who is at our hook route, should we not find a Magma Key. Yeah, uh, Dark Elf on the... Uh on the hook route not too bad in the rubicante spot uh especially once turns into dragon uh form can uh, is vulnerable to status effects including stop uh meanwhile step lively did uh fish out a stardust rod from the antlion cave so uh, step lively doesn't know it yet but uh there is a a little kid black mage who would just love to have that stat stick Claw for finding a uh, hourglass to use on said uh, Dark Knight. I mean, uh, Dark Elf. And Step is going to be pretty happy here. Uh, I mean, th this isn't the Lunars aren't especially fun, but Tala is really good because he's going to come with exit, and, so that if she goes and does a check with into uh, uh, into the hooker out there, she'll be able to just exit out instead of walking out like Clawfer's having to do right now. Yeah, I'm sure Klopfer was looking for uh, an exit mage of some kind uh, in the in the hook route, uh, but Step Lively finding that old man Sage on the mountain will save a little bit of time if she can make it through this fight. D Lunars uh, never uh, particularly pleasant and really giving her a hard time, but she makes it through. Great heads up play there, uh, throwing that cure two out. Um... In a in a desperation move right before is one hit uh, wins the fight. She has a little bit of jokes finding the cure three immediately after fighting uh, those undead dragons. So she has her uh, exit mage, also a uh, an early source of cure two. And we have and... two unfriendly bosses out of the way already. Yes, and two lunar bosses out of the way. So if we see sparkles, we will uh, know that we have a reduced roster of uh, of bosses that they could be. Klopfer going up to Hobbs to get his Tela. Now, if Klopfer wins, uh, Klopfer will be three and two and be in sole possession of third place and uh, will uh, face the the loser of Mike Mike and X Pankras in the Gaia Hat playing game. Yeah, a lot on the table. And that is one angry 
Exit Mage right now. He has a Gaia hat on, looking stylish. And a, a Stardust Rod, so we might see uh, a few casts of that. Maybe one on Fox. Nope, oh, just gonna hit him with the light. Yeah, the lit one uh, is quicker, although uh, it's a definitely a quicker animation, although the spellcasting time, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for uh, using the Stardust Rod as an item is the same as casting lit one. Yeah, it does pretty good damage, um, and, uh, but Lit One also is is elemental weakness to Octoman, so I think the, the Sardis Rod would have done a little bit more damage, but uh, still going pretty good. Tell is the main, I mean, uh, Ty question mark slash Rosa is our main set of damage anyway. And Step Lively is through the, uh, the Seafood Menace will be threatening the castle no more. Klopfer with his exit mage takes a little bit of extra looting. Ooh, there's an earth crystal. Um, takes a little extra looting uh, on Hobbs there, knowing that uh, Talon can just get him out instantly. That is a very interesting earth crystal. Uh, uh, so Steph Lively still early enough in her run that a check of the treasury would likely be very fruitful for her. Also, uh, there are two character checks up there. Uh, Mike, would you be looking to dive that tower right away? Hmm. You know, with Hela, you might want to do ordeals first, so he has some more spells online. Um, it, it'd, it'd be nice to have a Berserk Rosa up there. Um, but you, de you could go get the, get the treasury right now and use that, the, your upcoming power to propel you to the top. Looks like Step is going to do the ordeals now. Yeah, Step likely has enough power to take care of ordeals. Ordeals is kind of on the way. Uh, you do want to minimize your travel time as much as you can. Uh, so uh, certainly not a bad play to uh, take care of ordeals while she's in the neighborhood. Right, and then once you get, let's say, Cecil, who's a gated character in this flag set, as well as Fu. Oh, there's a Cat Claw for Yong. That's going to be really nice. Um, say there is a Cecil up there. He can instantly get online, um, start getting equipped, starting getting levels. Yeah, I have not seen uh, uh, any elemental claws for Yong as yet. That might be something worth checking. Uh, weapon shots for in the places uh, you visit, see if there's a, a Thunderclaw around. Yeah, Thunderclaws, Ice Claws, uh, super helpful against some really rude bosses. Speaking of rude bosses. So Mom Bomb is one of the ruder bosses to face in the first uh, spot on the bridge. Normally this spot is a, a pushover, but Mom Bomb has an extra 10,000 HP. Yep, and there's no way they're going to be able to chew through all that before he explodes. So we're going to have to, to get through his script, have, have a bomb bomb explode, and then deal with all the little bombs before they explode you also. This is a time where that Stardust Rod is really going to come in handy, and that is precisely what Step Lively is going to uh, wait on here. Yeah, really impressive play uh, by Step if you're in the early game. Flying through objectives, making good use of items. Um, I'm impressed. And that Stardust Rod takes care of the bomblets in one swell foop. Meanwhile, we have Palum wrecking uh, Octomam's day with a lightning too. And we have a French vanilla Mylon. If we a purple robe on the bridge, but uh, this time all the guests have uh, made the trek across. Yeah, and I saw uh, no save there. We have a little bit of swag on our way through, which on these flag sets is a little bit, bit scary because there's somebody out there that can punish you for not saving. Hmm. Would that be a, a a winged dragon of some kind? Oh yes, uh, the, uh, a, a dragon that doesn't like to have summons cast on it. 
Yeah, they took out the friendly Wyburn, um, or even Witchburn, for this black set, and we get good old fashioned Mega Nuke from from Wyvern. So it, it, he could show up anywhere, and he can instantly wreck you regardless of your HP totals in some spots. You know, sometimes you just want to play the hits, and Mega Nuke is a hit. But actually, Wyvern in the back attack spot, uh, not as bad as it could be. Uh, in order to make it not completely unfair, uh, Wyvern takes an extra beat on the back attack spot. Yeah, that that is that is solid. Oh, he's complaining about his body elements here. Um, makes sense, it seems he's about to fall off a ravine. And both runners are going to looking to get their Tela to to get some spells, I think. Most importantly, the Berserk. I see that Klopfer also kind of checked that chest there, so both uh, both Yongs are going to have their Cat Claw. Lots of speed, lots of strength. Yeah, that uh, Cat Claw definitely an upgrade over that Charm Claw. Uh, it's almost as if both runners were drawn to that uh, uh, to that chest. Uh, Mylon, meanwhile, uh, thrown off the bridge. If he's complaining about his body now, wait until he gets to the bottom. And we get another character check and objective with the Sand Ruby. So uh, today was not the day to fade Ordeals. No, Ordeals is hard required. You gotta cure the fever with that Sand Ruby. Uh, and uh, neither runner has been to the Desert Oasis yet. Uh, so we don't know who is in that bed, but it could be uh, a Cecil. It could be a Foo. Yeah, we're about to get a lot of gated character checks. Three of them in the very near future. And uh, that was leg, briefly. Yeah, 1,000 HP of leg uh, at this stage of the game is not going to last too long. No. <laughs> no matter how leggy he may or may not be. So each runner has a small advantage over each other right now. Um, step quicker through uh, objectives and Klopfer with uh, Palum gaining spell more and more spells in each fight. Yeah, and this Palum doing just a little bit more uh, damage with that uh, Stardust Rod with that stat stick than, uh, than Step Lively's Tela was. Um, with uh, the route that we anticipate Step Lively will take, uh, the kind of character difference will be minimized shortly, you would think. Yeah, with the chances of finding either Fu or Cecil, I mean, a lot of the time Palum's actually considered for getting uh, the drop at this point. So uh, we'll see if that character advantage dissipates. And Step Lively picking up a bunch of charm arrows in uh, Kaipo. We were saying earlier how useful they are. And Step Lively taking a look at the character walking right back out hopefully she doesn't forget shopping that. first yeah hopefully she doesn't forget really that's an objective sometimes you're just disappointed and you say no thanks yeah and she's gonna exit and she uh she went so quickly i didn't even see who was in the bed okay she recalls now and uh, <laughs> Yeah, she's going, going back. back in. That was a, a nice Kaipo item shop as well. Oh, that is a... Uh, uh, a twin. Yes, that is a uh, Porum. The ponytail on the left side means it's a right-handed twin. And that is a white knowing, knowing we're about to do Zot, uh, having Rosa in tow, Porum has very few chances on this party. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, Kaipo item shop, uh, life potions, exits, uh, heal potions, which it's always nice to have one or two of those. Uh, so another a nice item shop. Oh, and either twos. Yeah, until you have went, walked into the giant, um, found Wyvern at CPU, and ran out of life potions, then you realize how nice it is to have uh, life potions at a shop. So I'm glad to step past this. Not that giant is required here. 
want to welcome in the Raiders from a Free Enterprise. Thanks for uh, not spoiling the race you just came in from, but we're really glad to have you with us. We are 22 minutes into this one. This match uh, will help to determine the third place in the Guy Hack group. If Klopfer wins, he gets third place all by himself. If Step Lively wins, she forces a tie for third place. There will be a playoff race. We have everything to uh, play for. Uh, the uh, important thing to know is that uh, we started with a hook uh, that uh, we haven't found a magma key yet. The objectives, nothing strictly required on the moon. I'd like to bond a fair farewell to Senator Crocodile. <laughs> yeah, Step Lively into the Baron Inn, and the uh, second spot is the Fabul Gauntlet. And I, I'm seeing chat talking about hats. I, I just want to know that, uh, let chat know that Step is, is doing her, her hat duty. Tala is currently wearing a Gaia hat. Plopfer just picked up his Sand Ruby from Ordeals, which is required going to cure that fever, uh, going to wake up Porum from the bed and send Porum to a place that's much less comfortable, the Tower of Wishes. Meanwhile, Step takes out uh, Senator Crocodile as well as uh, looks like a Ambassador Alligator. And uh, what are the Piranha and Electric Fish? Are they staffers? They're kind of like um, the Imperial Guard, you know? Uh, they, they kind of stand there and, and guard the aquatic uh, leaders. Hmm. They, uh, uh, they're not really doing their job then. Because they just got stardusted. Those must have just been the initial wave. See these guys? They're all perfectly, perfectly formed to, to protect uh, Senator Crocodile III. <laughs> ah, nepotism alive and well. We see that Stardust Rod doing great work. Meanwhile, Klopfer is going to go directly up the tower, check out his two characters, and maybe a treasury. Yeah, this could be an inflection point early on. Uh, Step Lively doing the Baron in, and not, uh, not going straight for that Earth Crystal or that treasury. Uh, we'll see if uh, that pays off for her. It looks like we're gonna do the thing. Yes, it's time to rate that treasury. Rate that treasury. Woo! Do 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 Oh, there were goodies in there. There were. There were some nice things. Oh, I wonder if anyone's gonna go back and pick up a video now. Well, uh, that Bahamut would be nice for Rydia, but uh, Step Lively uh, ditching Rydia after getting the Sylph summon from as the reward from Baron Inn. Yeah, we had great stuff. We had Power Shirt, um, the Life Staff, and one of my favorites, the Glass Hat. Not my very favorite, mind you, but it is a nice hat. Hardy Arrows as well. So overall, I I'd give that a six. Yeah, six or seven, Rosa out of ten. And then Klopfer picked up a silk web and a power shirt from uh, Tower of Zot. Looking for a, uh, a an easy to access flame dog check. Step Lively, meanwhile, going to follow Klopfer into the treasury. Uh, going to find out that. Uh, she could have had a Bahamut summon for that radio. Yeah, and we'll, we'll see. I mean, it'll take a while to get ready online now. If you wanted to use utilize that Bahamut, um, you'd have to go pick her up, then get levels on her, and then start using. And they, no one has a uh, no one has a siren. I don't believe either. So, no, sirens were not in. Uh, Evelyn's shop, which is the only shop they could uh, have found sirens in. I don't believe any came with the starter kit. All 
All right, we have uh, the Mega Sisters. I feel like I've seen them here before. Huh. It, it seems like a, a regular thing to do. Some would say vanilla. But uh, Mega Sisters in their original spot. Shouldn't be too big a concern here. No, especially if we have... Oh, I, I don't know that... That Klopfer has the, the mute arrows. Um, that Step does. Step, Step will definitely be utilizing those at this fight, and maybe Berserk as well. Yeah, Berserk is... it. Timing your Berserk is tricky against the Mega Sisters. Uh, if you're uh, unlucky, you could get yourself trapped in a cycle of... Uh, getting uh, two of the sisters down and then having them come back up. Uh, in this spot, it's not as much of a concern, but uh, it's still something to watch out for. And Klopfer is through easily. Let's see if he elects for uh, safety save or just keeps diving. We're safety saving. Yeah, that would be an annoying fight to have to redo. It, uh, and uh, we still have not seen that wyvern. Uh, that wyvern at the Val spot can ruin your day. Step is uh, going doggo fishing, finds a silk web and a power shirt. Nice. Yeah, Clopper opened those same two chests, got those as well. Uh, those are really nice to see uh, from your <laughs> uh, from your fishing expedition. Clopper finds a, a cane and a Sid. So we have a lot of good Berserker gear, So, th th but this isn't the prize they were probably hoping for. Um, but still, I would imagine a welcome addition. We'll see at least one of these characters taken, I believe. And Clopper will uh, send tell it to the Tower of Wishes in favor of that cane. Did find a Gungnir spear in that treasury. And that's precisely what he's going to slap on him. Interesting choice. Um, a, a divergence I've seen in these flags is do you maintain a steady anchor the whole time? Uh, or do you utilize the full power of your team? By ditching the Tella, at least for now, Klopfer is electing to go with more of a speed team, and this is a fast spot. Oh, and it's hilarious as well. Oh, yeah. Um, d did you know Golbez, um, before he was clad in black, was a lot of us know he's a comedian. Did you know before that he was uh, a famous punster? No. Yeah, yeah, he he, he loved to tell puns. He even, enjoy he even submitted for pun... Uh, competitions. You know, one such competition, you had to submit like your 10 best puns. He, he did that and, and uh, was rejected. Unfortunately, you know, he, he wanted to win, um, but no pun intended. Oh boy. All right. Yeah, it's really bad. That's why he went on to Life of Evil and um, depending on I, which, right? Yeah. I I would say what he's done in Final Fantasy IV was less evil than that pun. Yeah, that's why he went that route. Um, <laughs> he wanted to improve his. <laughs> now we're seeing, I think, some mute arrows absolutely decimate uh, these sisters. It's a thousand damage versus 600 some. Without yeah, Step, Step Lively got through the sisters uh, much more quickly than Klopfer. But Klopfer Fine. is through Golbez. And yeah, that that's a Golbez. relief. Crumbles away. Uh, that fight, um, especially you were saying, Mike, with, with how uh, with how quick that spot is and without an anchor uh, for Klopfer, that can go kind of pear-shaped in a hurry. But Klopfer uh, hung in there and took care of uh, the evil brother. And the good news, at least, is that when we uh, go underground, we will have a free fight. Yeah, that is a King Queen Eblin in the Golbez spot. Okay, and hello, that's a magma key. 
Oh my, so uh, running Zot, definitely worth it. Now we don't have to go down that hook route. That's a bit of an advantage for Step, who might not necessarily need Palom, and now if, if she so chooses, can completely fade a hook. Klopfer is going to take on the Baron in, and uh, we were talking about Klopfer's anchor situation here. Uh, level 1 Rydia is a perfect anchor, uh, and now Klopfer has uh, the chance to stash her away in the Tower of Wishes until he wants to come pick her up. Uh, maybe hoping for a curse string at this point so that he can have a Blargy anchor. That would be nice. But, uh, yeah, as, uh, as, as chat pointing out, that was a vanilla magma key, and with the vanilla Maga sisters, uh, Tower of Zot had, uh, uh, a lot of scoops for us. Yeah, you could even say that Golbez is French vanilla E. He, 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 he does make a little appearance there. He does. Except, uh, you know, in the vanilla game, he sneaks out the back door and allows other people to do his dirty work for him. No, he's much braver today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's come to laugh in our faces this time. But hopefully, uh, Step punishes said bravery and gets through. Hella and Kane being the two to stay up uh, might be a little bit unfortunate. We'll see how Step uh, uh, manages to get through this. Yeah, that virus came out quick. And oof. Yeah, that's a fast spot. Um, so without anchoring, uh, maybe maybe we see a little bit of cheeky Tella casting some uh, some size and maybe some piggies or something to to help us uh, get a little extra time to get a star veil off. Now, Tella is is normally a slower character. So why is having Tella in the middle not enough to kind of anchor this spot? Uh, it depends on everyone else's uh, agility, too. Like, um, so let's say Tell is rocking 9 agility right now. To be RA1 to him, you're going to need uh, like around like 23 agility to to be able to to go as fast as gold is. Um, and I don't know that anyone has. Maybe, maybe Rosa has that right now with Artie Boat. That would be... Uh, who I would peg to, you know, if 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 I had a choice of who uh, Golbez didn't target, I would want that Rosa to stay up. I would think that Rosa uh, would have the best chance of outspeeding Golbez there. And now we're seeing some of those size uh, strats. Uh, I would cast it on one more person. Okay, we're good now. Some somebody's gonna get uh, somebody's gonna get a veil off this time. And we do see Rosa going up to the top spot to get RA1. Uh, Step is going to be prepared this time. Okay, so uh, what's the deal with all these uh, piggies and, and the size casts? What's going on there? You see, back before Golbez was a punster, he was a farmer, and he has an affinity for small animals. Um, <laughs> also, also, it's going to uh, take a status priority over... Uh, his hold gas that comes up and no one's going to get the actual status effect on them. Yeah, so uh, it allows uh, them to uh, deploy the veil that much more quickly before uh, Shadow has finished fading away. Uh, so a very heads up play by Step Lively to, uh, to take care of that. Uh, trying to get a little bit lucky is a little bit unlucky with that uh, Rosa being targeted, but we'll still have plenty of time to get that veil off. With everyone as uh, small and piggy, I, I forgot who is who. Everyone's name is Ty and Bay. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, Tella and uh, Porum, I believe, on the bottom. So oh, interesting that we took Porum. Klopfer dropping that 
uh, magma key in the well and uh, while we are getting that animation do want to thank our restreamer bad karma for uh, bringing out this uh, glorious slightly vanilla goopy mess and uh, thanks to our tracker Chazman for uh, keeping track of all of it for us keeping us honest and uh, thanks to my co-commentator Mike Mike 34 for uh, bringing the knowledge about Golbez's uh, career and history and also the best way to reduce him to size yeah I give all these guys a follow including the launcher of sheep sheep launcher my co-commentator Ooh, hourglass at silk webs nice shops these item shops are great tonight yeah they are I, I I'm wondering what bad karma has up his sleeve he did roll this seed and he's being just a little too generous on the item shops i'm sure I, there's it, something very scary in dwarf too i it, uh, well dwarf castle uh does have king queen eblin the tragedy yes it's a ghost story it's like hamlet And Ham Clopper, it, it, in the armor shop, gonna shell out to try and get a Dragoon Shield, it looks like. Looks like we might actually... I don't know if Step is gonna just drop this off, or if we're gonna get a hook check. Looks like we will get a hook check. Oh, and there are cat claws and ice claws for sale in Dwarf Castle. Clopper I saw will cat pick claw. up. Did you see a? Did he? Did he get a? Um, an ice claw as well. He did not get one, uh, but they are there. So Clopper must think that uh, he's at the stage where he doesn't really need to utilize elemental weaknesses on, on that Yong uh, to get through most of these fights. Steps outside maybe takes a safety save get some equipment done and going in because we don't know who the first fight is and it's it's a jumping door oh with the a dancing door is the most dangerous kind of door evil wall in the first spot not fun it's gonna be really hard to traverse on account of all that movement and it's also gonna punch you at a pretty high rate of speed regardless of what space it is it, it cheats yeah, normally there are six dolls here who all want to take turns, and uh, Evil Wall's going to get all of those turns to itself. By casting Berserk, however, you also are cheating, so you're going to go one for one here. Looks like uh, Rose is going to be doing the honors tonight. Sep Lively did take on that Staleman chest in uh, Cave Evelyn, I believe, uh, picked up a Murasame. Yeah, I do see that Hanzo, uh, well, I guess that's fake Hanzo going on in your inventory. Um, Edge would be welcome at this point. Very much so. Uh, Step Lively's got to be hoping for another piece of vanilla uh, in the hook route. We know that that will, will not come to pass. Now, every character is in these flags, and we've seen a lot of gated checks, and we haven't seen um, a lot of gated characters, so we may just see one coming for Clop for now. Yeah, Dwarf Castle uh, character will soon appear before this free fight. Step Lively going to venture further into Cave Eblin. And that's and another, <laughs> another Quake Head. So and that means our uh, Cecil and... Uh, who are either on the moon in the giant and what baron castle are the package yeah very much so uh, uh the the characters that uh really this seed would uh, uh like us to have are is going to bury them, bury them instead Whopper's party is like, I told them we already had one. I don't, I don't think uh, we got up to Quake yet. No, I, I don't, I don't think we have. 
Let's see. Oh, it seems like we should have because 34,000 from the egg plus a little bit more usually gets him there. And that was 20,000. But uh, I didn't see him learn it. So unless he learned it in the first fight, I don't know. Yeah, Clopper hasn't uh, cracked an egg yet, I don't think. Nope, but uh, he did both Baron spots. I mean, both uh, Dwarf spots and had some XP before that. So we'll, we'll see soon enough if he's bringing... Ooh, only a defense sword. That's too bad. Yeah, Xeno's right. The first fight, is we probably just missed the Quake. A defense sword, uh, not what you're looking for, but that Kane will certainly appreciate it. Yeah, defense sword being his, uh, by numbers, most powerful weapon um, in the game. I'm sure Luca is glad to take that off of her neck and give it to us. That's got to be heavy to weigh around your head like that. Yeah, it probably made her, her uh, dad feel better about it, too, really. And if all the tiaras uh, available in the seed weren't enough, uh, they're also for sale in Tamra. Chobdorf, check. And Klopfer is a runner of the people, checking the job dwarf, a plasterer. Now, is a plasterer another term for a bartender, do you think? <laughs> it very well may be. Um, <laughs> he's going to do, uh, we're going to run down into uh, Fey Marsh now, see who these bosses are down here. Uh, K Summon is on, so they can be holding our key items. Plus, uh, defeating the queen, whoever is in that spot, is a requirement. It is our third objective. And someone even put a key item in a, in one little chest hanging out here, so that is nice. Oh yeah, all you have to do is open it up, and and it's a, it's a key item. Or a cabin. Or a big palm! Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I, I think Bad Karma forgot to put a key item in there. Big bombs are kind of cool. I mean, you know, it's like fire three. Is that like, is that a, another package check? Open the <clears throat> chest and there's a big bomb in it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's probably right. And there is a curse ring too. So <laughs> if we want Rydia now, we can put levels on her and curse her when we want to. And when we don't, Blark. Yes, although Klopfer did, uh, I noticed, sell that Bahamut summon, so uh, that's not in the cards for him. It's also a pile of cash, that's true. It was uh, 40, 425,000 GP, something like that. I might be off by zero. I just see pile of cash and swim in it, and I don't care. Yes. <laughs> okay, Scrooge McDuck. Notice he wears a stylish hat. <laughs> hat, hat, hat. Hat, hat, hat. <laughs> mm. Oh, and that is a sparkle in the queen spot. Klopfer's going to go check it out. It's Blarg! <laughs> Did that Blarg, was that effective damage? <laughs> that, that, that might hurt a lot. -le. That Dr. Luge in the king spot, actually, not that bad. Yeah, that's that's doable. We would like to maybe have a, uh, a thunder claw would make it a little better, but um, it's going to be doable. Still a lot of HP and a lot of dialogue. We're going to. Oh, are we lined up to fight Blark with Arty Arrows? Arty Arrows will do a lot of damage to that dragon type. Uh, it's all going to depend on whether Klopfer can survive the initial Mega Nuke. Oh no, there's other things that... Oh wait, he has a Curse Ring. Did the Curse Ring go on Yong? That's going to make all the difference here. It gets it off. Manipulates the agility perfectly and gets a couple of Star Veils off. Yeah, drop that battle speed. Curse Ring, Yong, everyone's already won. And uh, Wyvern's about to have a bad day. Yeah, that uh, Wyvern's about to discover uh, that Arty Arrows really like to hurt dragons. 
unfortunately, um, since we don't have Bacchus, uh, we can't uh, Berserk Rosa, so she's going to be going a bit slower. But I still think we're going to get through. Even Not though the Wyvern is fast here. Yeah, the Queen spot, uh, very quick. But uh, Klopfer getting in a bunch of turns. Uh, that Rosa doing 3,500. And Arrow now 4,500. And then 3,000 with Palon too. Even, even Cursed Yong's getting a couple punches in. <laughs> All that and before, all just when the first wall goes out. So yeah, we're we're doing good damage here. Yeah, and that wyvern goes down. Klopfer gets uh, gets it done, gets that objective. Uh, we'll see if he's doubly rewarded. Oh, that yes. is double required. That is a twin harp. But and. Cluffer's got to be feeling good about himself now. Yeah, super good. Fades the, the Luge, got the value here he wanted now. Can continue on um, doing checks and objectives. And that, uh, uh, Cluffer going to check out Sylph Cave. Maybe he'll check out a trap chest, but more likely he'll just go straight down to talk to Yong in the bed. Yeah, with how buried uh, Cecil is like to be, um, and really pretty good equipment for his party, I, I think he's just going to go down here max speed. No pan, but we'll still uh, get the freebie from Sheila one. Now, Step Lively uh, saw that Wyvern in the Queen spot, didn't even wait for that Blarg to come out. Uh, instead, we'll uh, do some shop checks. We'll see if she uh, starts to prepare for that wyvern or if she's going to leave that wyvern for a little bit later. Going to be a little bit more dangerous for her. And I didn't see her pick up a curse drain, which means she, she just have... did. Oh, she did. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's on the on the table. You do okay. not want to try a fast blarg uh, without proper anchoring in a spot like this. Yeah, the uh, the uh, Fay March Armor Shop had curse rings for sale, and Step Lively had a <laughs> had some of that cash to splash, and she said, "Give me that." Clapper, yeah, meanwhile, no. going up to Fabul, going to check on Sheila, and gets a French vanilla spoon. Now we can eat with ease. And uh, yeet for quad nines. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that we've seen that. Eddie yet either. We haven't. Except so uh, when we visited him in the bed and he gave us uh, tickets to his band's show. Right, right. That was cool of him. But um, at this point, we take him in the party, possibly too, with a spoon doing. Uh, great damage but like all the other super powered characters um he's nowhere to be found yet <laughs> and klopfer uh keeping in mind the first commandment of free enterprise adam and cup especially do your objectives has the harp knows he's got to complete cave magnus sooner or later he's gonna do it sooner do you like music who doesn't like music? I don't know. I think everyone likes music. Although, you know, sometimes I see fading harp emotes out there. So there, there got to be somebody. All right. Well, um, you know, while we're uh, while Klopfer is heading down uh, Cave Magnus, um, there's an interesting question brought up in chat uh, that we're going to uh, ruminate on it, and, and uh, I'd like to you to explain uh, in a little bit, and and that is why the cursed ring is so good against this wyvern and is so useful in free enterprise. Uh, so we will get to that, uh, but first we have to hear uh, Eddie come save the day with his heart.
and we'll speaking of it's... which oh, yeah, yeah there's, uh, i'm glad step uh did that so that that, that would have been a that would have been unfortunate to to fade out at this point so we'll get yeah that music yeah that would have been a rough fade so uh Cloffer is going to summon the bard out of his bed and he's going to play us a song. What a lovely rendition of Lively Town from Soul Blazer. Klopfer is through and gets a crystal sword for that. That's what we don't have yet. Yeah, a lot going on right there. Um, we got great music from a great game series. Um, we got a crystal sword, so if we do find uh, Cecil, he'll be very happy and angry uh, simultaneously. And we have a very... Uh, a, a semi-free but very slow uh dialogue fight yeah dr luke uh does punch hard here but uh this is a doable fight that step lively uh wants to get done before uh she leaves the uh fame arch but uh before the harp we were talking mike about uh how important it was for step lively and, and earlier clopford to get a curse ring to uh, take care of that wyvern. Uh, what what's going on with the curse ring? Why is it so important to uh, slow enemies down? Yeah, so I pulled out my uh, blackboard in shock, and uh, I'm ready to have relative agility to conversation, or at least uh, a minor form of it. Class um, is in session. So. Uh, if you have a fast boss like that, they're they're going to be faster than you at, 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 at these king and queen spots. You can make all your other characters just as fast as them by getting uh, one character very slow, so that if if they're two, your other characters are two and a half times as fast as your middle character who's cursed, they're going to be the same speed as that uh, as the boss. So if they have let's say as low as 10 agility, but you have a four agility anchor, um, then they're gonna be as fast as something that say has 56 agility. Um, and that is why we want to curse our middle character to make everyone else as fast. And you saw how very effective that was against Wyvern. Very well played. And uh, I, I don't want to alarm you, Mike, Mike, but uh, Klopfer is making the play that works 100% of the time. Klopfer is doing Keyless Tower. And gets rewarded with a, a free fight. Um, and does a life glitch on a high XP spot there, but, and then finishing this off with a quick, really clean fight. And we'll see if your uh, statement is correct here in a second. It is correct. It's, a, it's correct 100% of the time. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, well, we're just we're just testing that 100% ratio here with a uh, darkness crystal. It continues what? to be 100%. Uh, every single time, every time, every time. So now we can go to the moon, but um, 
I still don't know that we have to go there yet. You know, we're running out of places on the blue planet to check. Uh, this Luge fight uh, could be something, but otherwise we still need a couple of tails. We still need a Baron key. We still need both the Legend Sword and the Adamant. Uh, and there, there's no place else on the blue planet to check. Yeah, even if you got Baron to Rat to one piece of Forge to the other piece of Forge. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing it either. Oh, it could be Pan. I mean, the Pan, Tower Key, and Luka Key are all still out there somewhere. Uh, yeah, I, we're I probably going to the moon. <laughs> yeah, Luke could have, uh, for example, the Baron Key, uh, and the Baron Key could split up into, like, Tower Key and Rat Tail, and Tower Key could lead to one half of Forge, and Rat Tail could lead to other half of Forge, but it's very unlikely. Meanwhile, we're, we're still getting dialogue here. He really likes talking. It's the fight that's not so challenging as far as staying alive, but it does eat a lot of time without uh, levels or um, uh, anti-machine gear. Yeah, Klopfer probably making that uh, making that call that uh, Dr. Lige would take up too much time figuring, you know, if my opponent uh, makes this play and it works out for them, all the power to them, I'm gonna uh, try and get some quicker checks in. But, yeah, you know, and... Step Lively has to, uh, might feel like she has to make a big play here, and this is a big play. Yeah, when you're running against someone like Klopfer and, and you're a pink puff, you're, you might be thinking, hey, I want to do... I want to do a check I don't think he'll do, and if there's value there, instant advantage to you. So it, it, the, the, the logic here is pretty solid. We'll see if it pays out. Clopper, meanwhile, going to head to the moon and going to check the shops. Uh, we haven't found Bacchus wines for sale yet. I don't think oh, we're we about haven't... to find Bacchus. They're going to be. <laughs> we haven't found sirens. I'm telling, though, they are. See, these, 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 uh, humming ways, you know, they know how to have a good time. Yes. They have, uh, they have the six packs of wine we need. With a bunch of Thor Rage and bombs. Yeah, they're ready to party. And that's a Luka key from Luge. So, one, uh, time consuming check into another, uh, Step Lively might feel like she has to complete this chain. Yeah, you definitely, you definitely have to check this out and really hoping for value. But there's a lot, so many key items out there. I feel like there's a pretty good chance um, that there is val value in Luca. Well, of course, Step Lively is going to make the play that pays off 100% of the time and go up Keyless Tower, first of all. And Klopper finds a Moon Edge. Which is great. Um, and all of our superpower characters are, you could call, you, Edge is a superpower character, but our, our Bard with a spoon, our Cecil, and our Fu are in the remaining three character checks. Now, I, I don't think Klopfer got the Hanzo Steel from the Stalemen chest, so I don't know what, really, what Edge would be rocking right now. It's a nice uh, defensive gear. Uh, but uh, as far as offense, he might have an assassin dagger, and that might be it. Did he take the edge? He did, and ditched the young. Maybe he saw a ninja sword somewhere, too. Ninja swords could be for sale somewhere. Or even long swords, and it's in fact going straight back to Mysidia, uh, but only finds a poison axe there. I've often thought Edge could be even cooler if Edge could, like, dual-wield axes. Yeah, I I've seen him wield, like, four crystal swords. <laughs> oh, speaking of which... Uh... Oh, we're getting sirens, is what we're doing. Oh, yeah. Gonna... Uh, head back into that tower, gonna sneak uh, some sirens from alerts and uh, hopefully get uh, a nice uh, tier 8 item as well. 
so at first, um, I, I was trying to figure out what Hopper was doing. I thought, oh, that's great dedication to, to loving your edge, to, to get him and then just go back to Earth and check all the shops for weapons to get him online. But no, specifically, our levels are pretty low for a moon dive right now. Um, and we don't have, uh, we don't have a great grind option. So he's coming down, getting, getting some sirens. Looks like we might be doing some gold dragons. Yeah, only picked up a handful of sirens. Uh, in, in these flags, you usually don't need uh, too intense of a grind, but uh, getting a quick infusion of levels uh, can only help. You know what an other, another fun play would be to do here? What is it? Well, we got hourglasses. We're on the moon. And there's uh, chests with stuff that can uh, be stocked with hourglasses. Yes, a nice cheeky hairdryer's chest. Yeah, and even even maybe pull some, uh, some uh, warlocks and carries and stuff deeper down. Very true. Uh, almost beside the point, but Klopfer did find a white spear uh, out of that uh, alert fight as well. So uh, that cane uh, not starved for options. Chat pointing out you can steal arty arrows from uh, carries. You know, I, I've been saying it this whole time. Gaia Hat is the group with the knowledge. That is Neon Gray dropping that knowledge that you can steal already arrows from carries. Neon Gray may may not be, uh, might have a little partiality in this one because <laughs> if Koffer wins, Koffer moves that third spot all by himself. But if, if Step wins, everybody has a chance. Yes, and that's why uh, uh, Step. Uh, besides showing her love for Kane, who is Bay, uh, also wants a tie for everyone. Everyone but the admins. <laughs> Looks like we're going to the bottom of the moon first. Yeah, I imagine uh, popping a sign. There are enough. Uh, key items out there that going for pure density is uh, a very uh, defensible, very sound play. And so likely to pay off right now, given uh, given how many key items we need still. Yeah, I mean, there are two key items in the ribbon room uh, by itself. There are still some free bosses uh, out there we haven't seen. Uh, we haven't seen uh, Dark Gimps yet, for example, so uh, there still could be uh, some issues up here on the moon, uh, but uh, there are some uh, very manageable fights as well. Did you see what Klopfer just did? What's that? Equip the guy hat. <laughs> hat, 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 hat. Hat, hat, hat. Oh, and if uh, he has a spare hourglass, uh, that will certainly be useful against the dolls. Yeah, this is a, a good fight to see here with your with as low HP totals as we have. We can stop those back three and burn the other ones down really quick. I mean, he has Quake here too, so that might just do the deal. Did he, did he throw the hourglass out? He sure did. Uh, well, oh, there it is. Well, okay. he's doing it now. Uh, so now we're now we're getting the Luca check, which I'm very interested to see. It's gonna determine uh, a lot in this race. Yeah, Luca check is going to be. Uh, huge there could be something big down here uh, the good thing about it is uh, there are no boss hunts uh, remember there's no need to check for a demist anywhere it doesn't matter uh, where demist is so uh, step lively can check that uh, crystal room and if it's not an item that helps her can uh, immediately reset out of a clock for count learn Bahamut and Klopfer found one half of Forge. That was an adamant in the ribbon room. That is hard required. So, uh, remember kids, you gotta play with your dolls. And 
step is hoping for some value here. We're gonna save, we're gonna go down, and we're gonna get our item before we fight our fight. And Clockwork going to take on the White Spear Altar, finds elements. Shouldn't be too much of a concern. Sometimes that ruby phase is a little bit scary, but um, I, I believe he has... Oh, did, he didn't buy the Ice Claw. We, we're pretty low level here, um, and I don't remember the magic uh, of this spot. Oh no. That Only is a, a protect ring at the end of that chain. Yeah, not what Step Lively was looking for, and that, uh, that Luge fight is just a massive time sink. And now Step Lively has to be feeling very behind. Definitely, it is a good risk to take. Um, and sometimes the rando rando's in your favor, sometimes it does not. Yeah, certainly not a uh, bad play. We were uh, discussing all the benefits of it before, uh, just not uh, working out in her favor right now. And uh, she might feel like she has to uh, take some more risks at this point. Yeah, I imagine at this point we're going to see a top up uh, moon play. I guess that's top down. Yeah, and, and uh, she might be more likely once she does find uh, a key item on the moon to go chase that key item. And speaking of vanilla, that is a white spear. Who needs good weapons for Edge when you have all the things to throw? <laughs> Darts for days. And Step no. Lively, I believe, reset out of that Sheila check. That that was a spoon, but she doesn't really need it right now. Uh, let's see, she has seven key items, so it's not like it's making the difference between nine and ten. Yeah, probably feeling every second is a second that needs to be saved, and and this this bird is not helping. That uh, tricky black chocobo just did not want to be caught. Uh, I've I've seen him, I think, in a Tecmo Super Bowl football game. <laughs> but we will get a music reprisal. That was that was a QB12 uh, black chocobo there. And CP and on the on the mute on the moon is not it's just not always that far. It's no. Be slog. No, it sure will be a ton of HP to chew through um, on the at the Oko Pogo spot. And uh, and and it's it, it's quick, so uh, the Mazers are going to come out a little more quickly than you anticipate. Uh, is going to use that spoon here on this fight. Uh, <laughs> no issue with that at all. Yeah, he's probably having flashbacks to a prior race where CPU was at the uh, element spot. But Step Starting Lively on. going to... Uh, uh, going to check out that harp, so we are going to get a reprise of music. In case you weren't with us earlier, the music is gorgeous tonight, as it usually is. Uh, arranged by our very own Xenocat, it is Lively Town by Soul Blazer. Uh, Lively Town from the game Soul Blazer. And we hope you enjoy again. And shout out to Xeno.
And that is a required CPU at the Okopogo spot with a rat tail. Yeah, and I suspect we'll see uh, even more value on the moon. Um, I doubt Klopfer bails yet. We're probably going to at least get one or two more checks. Yeah, I, I don't believe Klopfer uh, will bail. I don't think Klopfer uh, has much reason to feel behind. Uh, I think Klopfer will want to clear out as much of the moon as he can while he's up here. So he's going to head to Crystal. Um, where is Step heading now? I mean, I believe uh, Step only has the moon. To the moon! To the moon! Yep, Step will uh, summon that whale. What would you do if you could summon a whale? Um, harmonics, you know, like uh, maybe get uh, d definitely do some Motown with them. <laughs> I'd I'd see if uh, if I could get a whale to recreate that scene from Free Willy for me. I'd love to be jumped over by a whale. Yeah, yeah, it, may, it might happen. <laughs> so we have uh, a dimps here, and I think we have 10 key. Or if we're not, we're close at this point. So we might see some life glitches. Definitely can get some XP, see if we get some value with them too. With the hourglass, it's a totally free fight. Yeah, uh, at the... Uh, vanilla wyvern spot uh, so they'll have a, a little bit of HP and they'll hit hard uh, but uh, Klopper has got the oomph to handle it I guess I sh shouldn't say totally free if they're if they knock down the person using the hourglass then you could run into some issues but the hourglass got off cleanly gonna get a life glitch off maybe no his zerkers are too fast Double Zerkers make it tough. <laughs> That's Cure 4 on Rosa. To give you even more confidence, that's a package. Which we know holds some type of power boost, but at this phase of the game, a little too late to take that said power. Now, Clopper does have a Crystal Sword. As does Step Lively. Would you, uh, would you sit through the package cutscene for a Cecil with a Crystal Sword? Well, at this point, we're gonna have a full moon clear. Um, I'm not sure if he has any remaining sirens. Uh, you're gonna have a pretty low level, uh, uh C Crystal Sword Cecil if you do that. Oh, I did see two sirens though. The Klopfer might have wasted one. Yeah, if you don't step out of that open tile and use one, you get a sound effect that'll confuse you for a second, and then you'll wonder what's going on, and you'll see that your siren is gone. It's it's a sad experience. And that is what occurred. However, Rosa already having Cure 4, and now getting more XP. And, uh... And some more moon checks left. Uh, he'll have enough XP even without uh, that lost siren. Step lively, uh, uh, politely declined that moonja.
Still rocking the Tella. And what about you, uh, Sheep? Would you go for a Sea Soul to Slate? I I just think a Crystal Sword Cecil with how many checks you still have to do, you can still get a couple of levels uh, on a Cecil. I I. I just think it w a Cecil would still swing uh, hard enough to make uh, to 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 make him better than just about anybody else uh, you could throw at Z. Yeah, and keep in mind we're kind of in no man's land at the moment for Clover. Uh, we we don't have we good weaponry for Edge. We're we're a ways off from Nuke and White. Um, ooh, here's a, a very punchy Odin. Yeah, Odin at the Bahamut spot. Uh, not fun. But it's a very good play by Step going, uh, starting here, feeling behind, and trying to get some, some early value. Unfortunately, we know that the Ribbon Room and, uh, the Moss Altar have, uh, have value. And, uh, we... <laughs> And Step Lively uh, finding out quickly that Odin at that spot, uh, anything but free, hits hard, hits fast, uh, will uh, do the Odin attack uh, from time to time and just wreck everything. And uh, Step Lively uh, not going to tangle with that right now. If, if I recall correctly, uh, not the highest magic spot though, so the Odin attack shouldn't be as daunting it's those punches combined with it that make it dangerous um very fast very hard hitting need some blinks off and cure force and we're pretty low level on this side Plopper, meanwhile uh taking on ashura at the um as a spot and uh the uh Still doesn't have mute arrows, I don't believe, but uh, is doing enough damage with uh, the rest of his party that uh, that Ashura is uh, going to succumb. Must have sold the rune axe too, I imagine. Question in chat: Is it possible for Ashura to hit one of your dead characters with life? One, sadly, that is a no. No, once your character is, is dead, it can no longer be a target for any of Ashura's spells, including Life 1. It's a real bummer. Yeah, I was all, as a kid, I was always hoping, hey, hey bring, bring me back to life. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Evanescence won't work against Ashura. She will not bring you back to life. But Clopper is through, uh, and it's oh, an X cap. <laughs> which also means there is a big chain. Well, unless uh, Odin at Cape Bomb, it also has something. But uh, we will see if Clopper decides uh, that checking the rat tail is going to be a better use of his time than tangling uh, with a really mad king on the Bahamut throne. We still need Baron Key, we still need a Pink Tail, we still need half a Forge. Um, so it's possible that Rat leads to like Pan and, and you get a, a Baron uh, from one of those checks. But uh, I think the odds are here that that we have something of value in value. We're about to find out, at least an attempt. No Thunderclaws for Odin. Yeah, Thunderclaws would be uh, nice on that edge. Uh, meanwhile, Step Lively, uh, I, I think fulfilling the... Uh, fulfilling a fantasy I, I think a lot of little kids have, uh, changing dolls to frogs. Yeah, and, and frogs strangely don't change back into dolls so it's a good play yeah and the the big issue is that the dolls change into the big doll when there's only one color of them left but if they're frogs they can't change into a big doll everybody knows that 
No, they just croak. But, um... <laughs> Mike Mike's here all week. Tip your servers. I learned it from Golbez, I apologize. <laughs> well, speaking of here all week, uh, our tracker chasman89 has been here all night uh keeping track of a very exciting <laughs> race and our restreamer bad karma has been on top of the ones and twos uh making sure that all of the music got transmitted to you so uh thank you to both of them and thank you to edge for uh throwing an x cow in odin's face for 7k damage ouch and, uh, you know, what else are you going to do with that Excal? Oh, and that's a nice quad nine from uh, Quake Kid. And Flopfer is through that Odin at the first time of asking. I'm guessing. Oh, there we go. Pink tail. So we're going to get an adamant armor. And that rat tail contains a chain. That is a nice uh, adamant armor. It's also a requirement. And it's also just nice. Klopfer's got to feel good that the uh, that he could just go to the adamant grotto uh, just one time, uh, talk to the, the, the people there, take care of everything all at once. And that, that's very hard to fade anything on that moon. Um both uh, start a top down and bottom up had value. So uh, lots of value on a moon with no objectives tonight. You know, we were saying uh, the dream at the beginning of the uh, of the night was to fade moon. That turned out not to be the case. Uh, the moon had lots of value, even though there were no uh, quote unquote moon objectives. So I'm curious as to what Klopfer is thinking in terms of uh, in terms of his Z fight right now. Yeah, so uh, his team is Edge, Palum, Rosa, and Kane. Would you be comfortable taking uh, that party to Z, Mike? Well, Edge is throwing boomerangs and has darted everything. Uh, Palum doesn't have oh, uh, Palum doesn't have a uh, nuke yet. I think you're okay with this party, but I, we might see some more sirens stolen. That or he'll power couple uh, Rosa Kane. Would you uh, want to ditch one of the uh, characters for a more suitable anchor? With the curse string, you're pretty good. Um, anchor wise, you, you have a lot of options open to you. Um, you could drop someone for an anchor, you could put the curse string on Palum. Uh, so, so there's there's quite a bit on the table there. Um, I, in, in this position, I would definitely probably keep my party as is, maybe uh, do something for some more levels. We're going to do the required double dip of tower. Step Lively did make it through the elements fight at the White Spear altar, getting the vanilla White Spear. But uh, more importantly, getting uh, some EXP, you would think. And that Pale Dim, uh, no match uh, for, <laughs> for that boomerang. If you were feeling like you weren't that far ahead, um, you could try the fight as it stands now. Rosa has 2100 HP and a life staff, and um, there's that guy ahead to help avoid uh, multipliers, but uh, it's still uh, a bit risky. I've seen 2200s fly out in this situation before. And when you say uh, avoid multipliers, what are you? 
uh, referencing uh, there. Uh, Z's uh, magic attack multipliers on Big Bane. Um, so you can you can evade your your evasion due to your wisdom and will will uh, help you dodge a roll of that or more at, at a time. So you want as much plus wisdom plus will uh, gear, especially on Rosa, because Kane's about 2600 and is wearing adamant. He's going to be fine. But Rosa is the one casting the cure fours. Yeah, and you want to do everything in your power to uh, keep her uh, safe. Put her in an egg carton if you have to. Clopper did get the pan from the tower key, so the chain continues. Go fetch. This pan is going to lead to uh, the Baron key. There's no other choice. And the Baron key is going to have uh, the Legend Sword in one of its... Uh, in, in either we the get, basement or the uh, trash can. We could get it here and Sheila could have um, other piece too. We'll, we'll see here shortly. Nope, just a nice hat. So, as you say. Yeah, I mean, uh, selfs wouldn't have anything of value for us. Why would they? That's a nice hat. Um, some of us are fond of, of hats. Hat hat. I mean, it's no, it's no Gaia hat, I'll tell you that. That's a fact. It is no Gaia hat. <laughs> and we're going to get a bit more XP, too, in the Baron basement. I don't know if that, what, uh, if that'll be enough for Clotford to feel comfortable. We'll see. When did we decide it was a glass hat as opposed to a glass helm or a glass uh, fedora or a glass beret? It is, is sometime before uh, my pink puff time with uh, <laughs> Shout out to the pink puffs, by the way. Uh, Mike, Mike, uh, uh, doing wonderful stuff with the Pink Puffs as well as Step Lively. Yeah, and shout out to Asuka for uh, all her hard work on keeping a very uh, interesting uh, leagues for two seasons now. It really is a testament to uh, to Asuka and her hard work that uh, Pink Puffs are making such an impact on the Atomy Cup. Uh, it's great to see. Yeah, and, and a couple uh, graduated puffs, uh, Rybon and uh, Angie Dave are, I believe, sitting on the top of their uh, group, so GG's to them. As well as present company, Mike Mike. Uh, Clopper uh, continuing to do some shopping at uh, an hour and a half, uh, picked up a heroin robe. I like the uh, finding the the defense sword there, walking past and realizing, wait, Edge has nothing to do. Here, take this, <laughs> it's a card. Yeah, also uh, re-picking up that Artemis bow. I believe that's like three Artemis bows in the seed. I might have checked the, I, don't, I didn't see if, if Hopper did, but I might check the shop actually for ninja swords. That'd make a big difference at this point. Well, he did just check the uh, the armor shop. Uh, did not check the weapons shop, but uh, Klopp for going to take the safety save down here. Meanwhile, Step Lively playing with fire with the CPU. Ooh, we're getting some globes. Mini orbs of death. Yeah. Uh, just uh, a little bit too slow in taking care of the main CPU. Uh, although... Uh, Step is is going quickly enough that she'll be able to clean up the globe 199s with some life potions, and uh, and we'll try and start the process over. We've seen an inordinate amount of quad nines on our character, and great. Oh, that's so good. Uh, took the risk to get through that fight quicker, knowing you're going to take some globe nines, um, uh, but picked up a little bit of time there. So GG step.
Yeah, well done, by Step Lively. Uh, and that was the rat tail. Uh, so she absolutely needed that. Clopper, meanwhile, going to uh, blaze his way through that Dark Knight Cecil, not even giving him a chance to give a speech, and is going to go straight into the basement. And depending on what the basement has, we'll see if we actually need to go up and um, do the, the the throne. I mean, the upstairs, the Canazzo spot. Yeah, and uh, it, uh, it might actually be quicker to walk back out the sewer uh, than to uh, complete liberating Baron Castle if uh, this spot contains the Legend Sword. Yeah, they, they quickened up the cutscene a, a little bit, but I think it's still quicker to walk out. And the Demis down here, Klopfer, going to try to slow it down. Uh, Demis will hit three times and then fade into mist. Uh, really annoying because your Berserkers can't really Berserk. Now we have a Boomerang and a Mute Dagger on um, on edge. That, that Mute Dagger would have been really helpful earlier. Ooh, and uh, Klopfer's going to dart that Defense Sword at mist. Sadly, nothing happens as Defense Swords fly right through the mist. Yeah, and he can't get it back either. It's not a boomerang. He doesn't have like back attack yong abilities where he can run across the world, grab it, and then get back in position. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice if you could just say, hey, hang on, I'm just going to run over here. Nope, once you uh, once you dart and miss, it's gone. As it stands, it looks like we're doing three to four thousand damage per round to Z berserking with this party. That's not ideal. No, so we'll see uh, how Klopfer uh, wants to take it on. His, his HP still a little on the low side uh, before he would feel really, really comfortable. Yeah, and it's not a position you want to be in, knowing you've ran the full seed. Um, done almost everything there is to do other than uh, Luca and the King spot. Um, and not having the levels, knowing your opponent can be right here also, but feeling like you kind of want some levels. To, there's something, be it uh, Nuke on Palum or just Rosa. Um, over that 2200 threshold. It does get Rosa up to white. That is that, a big help. That Demis is vanquished and just a tiara from the throne. Uh, but you can't reset it out of this. You gotta walk it out. That is a requirement, but uh, liberating Baron Castle is a requirement as well. If you took your Z fight right now, I suppose... You could bluff Palom, since it's going to be a long fight anyway, you might consider bluffing Palom up enough times that Reflected uh, Virus and White is doing its job. I don't know, I haven't been in this position too many times. Oh, but you also have to have an anchor, and that's probably your Palom. Yeah, and that uh, uh, Palom not getting e any EXP from the uh, Demas fight uh, could get uh, Palom up to Nuke, probably, but Clopper not interested. Antlion, very, very far from uh, its natural habitat. Yeah, uh, Antlion as the ruler of Baron. Um, I don't know how much worse uh, the, the people of uh, Baron could be ruled, but... Uh, Antlion doesn't seem uh, too egalitarian to me. No, he's probably very annoyed too. Got sent down from the moon to impersonate the king. He's not nearly, he can't jump as high as usual. Um, and now no. just got beat brutally. Yes. And, and plus that rope just does not complement his, 
his pincers at all. Or the eyes, yeah. Uh, oh, they, they, they fool. <laughs> nice of you to show up. Where have you been all our life? Have you seen Cecil? Or maybe uh, my spoon bard? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we know for a fact that uh, Cecil and uh, Spoony Bard are in package and giant in some combination. I see those mute arrows continuing to do work. They've, they've, they've been MVP this seed, other than, you know, the guy I had. Was that a kissing, uh, getting cozy Rosa and Cecil turning to stone to save us? Well, the, the, the Hamlet, I, well, you know, some form of Shakespeare taking place in a seat again. <laughs> oh, the power of love. And Klopfer does get his legend sword. He is in, finally officially in go mode. Uh, does have that foo uh, that uh, he, he ditched uh, Palin for. We'll slap that uh, curse ring on Fu. You would think that's a serviceable anchor. Uh, Mike, are you feeling confident with that uh, anchor Fu? Oh yeah, the, uh, Fu's a great anchor with a crystal ring, and he's also going to be really hoping that there's some Hanzo steel for sale, or defense or swords, gods. or a bunch of apples, and everyone's safe. <laughs> Yeah, here's a here's a case where uh, munching on a few apples might not be the worst idea in the world. Yeah, you're very safe um, if you eat enough apples on Rosa here. You can power couple your way through and and dart whatever else. And selling the crystal sword, Klopfer wow. <laughs> asserting <laughs> the dominance over the seed gonna sell the second Bahamut too. We're gonna have a lot of apples and uh, darts, I think, and maybe some Zeus gauntlets to help our berserkers out. Oh, <laughs> no, we're just gonna dart our way to victory. Three defense yes. swords purchased. The, you know what they say, um, that uh, I believe it's uh, the best offense is a good defense, right? Right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Klopfer is going to be uh, looking to positively offend Z with the uh, amount of sharp steel heading his way. It's getting pretty late, um, and I'm seeing that that chat is, is suggesting that we catch some Zs, maybe? I mean, the Zs are waving. I don't know if they're waving... Uh, uh, goodbye to us, or or what? No, but uh, you know, Zeromus. There's only one place for Zeromus to be. He's just—he's too big. He's too bad. He's too much to be anywhere but at the end of the game. Uh, but you know, we gotta randomize him. This is a randomizer. This is the Adam and Cup. So we uh, got to dress him up somehow, and that leads us to a question. And Mike, Mike, I'd be delighted if you would do the honors. Whose booty are we going to skadooty tonight? Ooh, D. Clop for making the short trip using the pass that... Uh, we got in minute two of this game. <laughs> the pass was the uh, free item given to us by Edward. And uh, finally making use of it. Klopfer going to enter the Z fight. Uh, did have a couple of apples that uh, he had lying around that he used on Rosa. Rosa up to almost 2300 uh, has to feel a little bit safer. Yeah, with the equipment we have, that's that's pretty uh, pretty solid. Even edge over the twenty two hundred threshold, so we're in a lot better shape now. Yeah, two shakes before that uh, that crystal, but not uh, too concerning.
And it's Ultimus. Which That's answers pretty cute. All the, all, yeah, answers all the ancillary questions. <laughs> that Silk Web comes out. That uh, counter nuke against Edge. Ooh, a little unfortunate. Ouch. You'll live to dart another day. Or revive to dart some more. Yeah, that edge has to be uh, picked up off the floor. That was a uh, a, a nice a, a nice nuke roll. Uh, just a little bit too much for edge to handle. Step getting revenge on that Odin. Coming back with a lot more power. That's very well done. Uh, and very required as that is the pink tail. And a step going to uh, begin her trek of the blue planet to pick up the rest of what she needs. And meanwhile, Defense Sword Darting Edge is uh, doing about 5k damage. Yeah, we said Karma made things pretty easy for people, but you know, did a pretty good job of hiding a lot of power having that pink tail. Uh, at the end, and the, the Cecil Fu all hit, uh, well, hit in as well. Yeah, it sure would have been nice to have that adamant armor in place for the Odin fight, but uh, both of our runners doing very well to get through it just fine without it. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, Klopford did a little okie doke on me. I thought he was going to uh, peep uh, that Z. Hovered his cursor oh, over the peep spell just a shade too long. I see him sitting on Edge's turn. I wonder if he's considering a nerf or maybe just out of darts. and waiting to uh, give an either to that foo. Hoping yeah. that he doesn't get a big bang straight into Meteo here. That would be uh, the one thing that uh, might really concern him. Yeah, that foo burned a lot of MP with that life two on edge after he took that counter nuke. Big bang coming out. This is not nerfed, but a pretty uh, kind <laughs> roll there. <laughs> looked pretty nerfed, but yeah, it was not. A very kind roll. Uh, I like that Rosa's uh, zerking right now. That's a little yeah. risky, but uh, but we're going to get through this fight quicker because of it. Yeah, that Rosa uh, has been with us the entire game. Uh, Rosa was the second character. Uh, and pretty early on, uh, she got Artemis bows. Uh, there were arty arrows in in the um, in the Troy of Treasury, so she's uh, kind of been uh, equipped for bear pretty much the entire time. And that counter nuke going uh, against. Uh, Kane, which is exactly who you want to see it against Kane, uh, able to weather that. I wonder if Edge uh, knew that he was going to have a double duty as a dart thrower and chemist tonight. And there are rocks. And that Kane with a nice dodge of those rocks. Uh, but that means that Z is at less than 12,000 HP. Klopfer just getting the final shots in. And Klopfer has done it. Klopfer wins and clinches third place in the Gaia Hack group, will be in the play in game. Klopfer moving on. GG's to Klopfer for uh, uh, getting out of the Gaia Hack group in. Uh, third place and we are joined by Klopfer. GG's, what a race. Hey, thanks for the GG's. Yeah, that, that was one. It's a little, little scrappier than a Z fight that I'm used to, but got through it.
Yeah, where were where was all the good characters, Coffler? I I look, I had that crystal sword, so I of course knew Cecil was going to be on the giant. So we'll just not worry about him. And of course, he never did show up there. Uh, we we had some good characters there, but I would really liked a better weapon there for Edge. That mute dagger just really wasn't cutting it. And that was yeah. my late game upgrade for him. Uh, we, we were enjoying uh, your purchase <laughs> decisions. Uh, three defense swords, he's starting <laughs> and being a chemist. Yeah, pretty much. I, I did forget I had that newly forged Excal. I could have darted that as well, but uh, it was all right. He had to uh, make sure Fu's MP stayed up there. I was wondering, with the Stardust Draught and, and expertly equipped Gaia hat, I'll say, mm -hmm. um, and, and Life Staff, did you consider grabbing an anchor um, and maybe running reflex strats on Z at all? Uh, no, uh, without having like access to say two new casters, I didn't really like that. You can do white with uh, Rosa, but uh, that has a slower cast time, and so while it is doable, I, I guess I didn't feel like that would be as fast, especially considering the extra time to change my party to get that going. So I decided to just stick with Berserk Strats, especially because my mind was on Berserk Strats right until the end, because I assumed when I went to go do my forge, I could finally buy some weapons for Edge, of course, that they must be somewhere, so I'll just equip him right then. Uh, so by that point, I was just committed to my plan and just went with it. You, you might be sad to know that uh, Staleman had a uh, fake Hanzo. Yeah, that is is one I was considering doing, especially as I uh, had picked up an hourglass at some point, but eh, too bad. Missed it. Uh, yeah, I was definitely thinking the when I did pick up that edge, I had so much of the seed left. And really, I was just looking for one good weapon. Uh, I had done my practice seed last night and had accidentally left the Thunderclaw on my edge going into my Z fight. And he still did really respectable damage with the Thunderclaw and one good weapon, so I really only was hoping to find one. But unfortunately, that didn't occur, so he was just uh, the dart machine for the entire time once we picked him up. Yeah, you know what they say. The best offense is a good defense sword dart. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that yeah. somewhere before. That, that, yeah, the most common saying around. Uh, it worked out. They were doing good damage. It was fine enough. Uh, it was also at least okay for the, that CPU fight, which was going to be a slog with all the HP there. So when I was like, oh, well, I can dart my way through this fight at least. Yeah, we were commenting on how you just can't seem to get away from sloggy CPU fights in uh, these <laughs> tournaments. So um, you're, you're, gonna, you're moving on to that play-in game, uh, going against a, a couple runners who who've won in previous matches. Are, are, do you have any super secret strats you're thinking about busting out versus them asking for a friend? Yeah, yeah I definitely bear to follow up on that. Uh, not too much. I'm, I've been generally pretty happy with my play in here. So I think I'm going to just try the same things I've been doing like in this seed. So as you kind of saw there, I'm pretty loot happy in the early part of the seed. These, as I'm sure everyone's seen as we've seen a ton of these at this point, uh, these seeds, tend to go pretty long. You tend to have to do a lot of checks. So that time investment early on to just pick up as much power as you can and kind of know what power you have to work with, as well as picking up uh, just the items to sell. So you have money to buy all the useful J items once you get to the gated shops. Seems to just generally lead to getting through seeds relatively quickly, as well as not big time losses from fights you can't get through or fights you have to reset out of multiple times. So I'll probably stick with that strategy and we'll see how it pays off. Uh, as always, mid-race, I'll have to make calls if I'm feeling behind. I might start just doing some risky things, do some uh, low, low percent checks, things like that. And of course, you're going to do Keyless Tower 100% of the time because it works 100% of the time. Oh yeah, definitely. It's it, There's always value there. So check that Keyless Tower. I, I, you know, kicking myself, why didn't I do that? It's my first thing underground. <laughs> now, uh, speaking of the Keyless Tower, which uh, resulted in the Darkness Crystal, there were no moon uh, objectives required in the original list, but the moon was uh, hugely important. Uh, uh, what were you thinking when you saw the original objectives and when you saw how few of the key items you needed were actually on the blue planet? So definitely when I was just looking at the objectives, I thought, oh, this might be a Fade Moot Seed. We don't get a ton of those, but it could happen, so all right. Uh, and then, of course, by the time I was halfway through the blue planet and had whipped on so many key item checks, or at least the important ones, 
It's like, okay, I'm going to have to go into the moon. How are we going to plan this? Uh, one of the big things I was hoping to find was sirens, simply in case the moon was really rude. I would always have the option of just grinding. I had a bunch of hourglasses so I could do gold dragons. Uh, I didn't find sirens. Maybe I missed them in my shopping or they just weren't in the seed. Uh, so when I saw that edge on the moon, it was definitely a hard choice because I knew I had no weapons for him. But I also knew I could use him to get sirens and then have a uh, grind strategy necessary in case the moon bosses proved to just be really rude since I knew progress was almost certainly up there and I was going to have to go through it. Yeah, I thought it'd be a, a funny play if you w took the edge, went and stole the sirens, and then went to the tower wishes and needed them for uh, a Rydia or something. Uh, yeah, that was very much on my mind, but again, I was like, I have so many checks left. Some of these are going to give me uh, good weapons. It's fine. We'll just go ahead and stick with the uh, we'll stick with the edge. We'll find him something by the end of the seed. Uh, that being said, with the amount of experience I got, probably grabbing that yawn there. Uh, I was totally happy with Palum being my uh, my anchor there. With having him do the uh, the curse ring, he never gets that fast, and he still had some utility throwing out some spells. And then Fu, same thing. He doesn't get that fast so with the curse ring. I'm totally happy with him. With as my anchor, I can do plenty of utility. Well, as Mike Mike was uh, saying, uh, you've clinched third place in the Gaia Hat group. Uh, hat, hat, hat. Um, hat, hat. You, you have uh, clinched a spot in the play in race against uh, either Mike Mike 34 or uh, some guy named X Pancras. Um, what would you like to say to them? You have the uh, you have the mic, you have the floor. What would you like either of them to know about uh, uh, about what you have lined up? For sure. I wanted to say I'd be I'm extremely excited to get a rematch against either of them. So I'm looking forward. I know I'll be watching their race very closely to see who uh, comes out on top of that. And whatever happens there, I'm looking forward to getting into that rematch. Uh, I'll be, just be playing my game and seeing if I can pull it a win doing that this time. All right, so let's 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 pump it up a little bit. Um, you can make it a little more intimidating. You can uh, make it a little more challenging. Come on, I know you got it. I know you can do it. I'm gonna fill my entire inventory with hats. It will be nothing but hats, and I don't just mean every inventory slot. I mean 99 hats. I will sell everything I can, and I will grind for hours on end. You have never seen so many hats. You will just be piles, piles of hats that you will not be able to overcome. The hats are coming. You heard it here first. Clockbird. I will definitely root for that. <laughs> Clopper going to get it done for the hat. So, uh, Mike, Mike, any uh, final questions you have for uh, for Clopper tonight? Uh, no, I just want to say a great race, a great job, and the best of luck to you and your Moogle friend and uh, the play-in game. Is there anything else you had uh, to add, Clopper? Uh, nothing else. Just as always, wanted to just thank everyone here for putting on the great show for us. So, Mike, Mike, and Sheep Launch here for doing the commentary, uh, Chasman and Bat Karma behind the scenes, as well as just the entire admin team putting on this tournament. It takes a lot of work to do all this, and I'm having a blast in it. So, big thanks to them. And big thanks to you for putting on a show tonight. And best of luck in the playing game, GGs. GGs, thanks. And call for a band of the people buying all the hats in the play. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it, he also showed us that the job dwarf is a plasterer. So, uh, I, uh, it, antithetical to our restreamer's name, uh, good karma gets rewarded. So Klopfer uh, improves to three and two with a winning time of 146.19. And uh, Steph Lively is uh, got through uh, Baron Castle, now taking on the Baron Throne with a uh, with a Fu uh, to help soften the blow, uh, get some blinks up. So that'll be nice for her. Uh, Step Lively uh, put on a really good race, had um, an unfortunate time stink with the the Luge fight into the. Uh, Luka Key, which really didn't uh, pan out, and the Luge fight uh, was slow. But otherwise, uh, Mike, Mike, Step Lively has been 
are really solid tonight. What have you thought of her play? I've been very impressed. Um, like it did a lot of things to to save time, took some risks that really paid out, like uh, like getting CPU uh, to, to Globe Nines um, with, I believe is Zerking. Um, has had a really clean race. And I mean, without that, that risk, um, this might have been neck and neck. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a really uh, good risk to take. It just didn't pay off uh, for her, but uh, she has played a really solid race, um, uh, really showing uh, a great grasp of the game. Uh, you saw some uh, nice strats uh, all throughout. Uh, you know, Cal uh, Calbrena frog strats. Uh, that uh, nice clean ordeals uh, she had using the Stardust Rod to uh, take care of uh, the enemies up there. So absolutely nothing uh, for Steph Lively to be ashamed of, and uh, she could uh, hang her hat on a really well done race and a really uh, nice tournament for her. I see what you did there. <laughs> um, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a tough Z fight here as well. At least um, at least uh, a different one. We have we have Porum, who has even le less HP than Rosa. Uh, Kane's HP is fine. Rosa's lower than Coffers was uh, around maybe just a bit under two thousand. Um, Forge may provide some answers as to what she's thinking to do on Z. Yeah, this might be uh, an opportunity to um, buy some apples. Uh, there aren't really any other weapons uh, that could be here that uh, would really benefit her. So uh, she has a crystal sword. She has Bahamut orbs. Uh, she should have uh, a cash to spare. And I didn't see um, what was there, but we did rob Coco. You know, uh, it, I'm sure it was the book that uh, he had like 20 pages left to finish, and now he's never going to know. It was probably Hamlet, and I did him a favor. <laughs> he thinks there's a happy ending. Spoiler. Is this, is this a dagger I see before me? Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. I feel like we're bouncing around Shakespeare here, but I approve. <laughs> and Step Lively does get her crystal. She did pick up a Zeus gauntlet for that cane. Uh, so no apple strats here tonight. Uh, she was thinking about it, I think, uh, but uh, just decided they're too expensive, would take too much time to uh, sell the farm, and she's just gonna go with what she's got. It looks like alternate power couple strats. Yes, the the jealous type strats. A adamant armor Zeus gauntlet defense sword cane is gonna be doing some major damage. There's a lot of expensive things in our inventory right now. Yeah, could have uh, uh, could have sold it, but uh, you know you can't take it with you. I noticed that Step Lively did not sell that crystal sword. Maybe still holding out hope that uh, uh, Cecil will show up one of these days. Cecil must. <laughs> just say you know i'm not that high level here's your crystal sword um have a spoon and a bahamut and enjoy be nice to me yeah uh, maybe there uh, maybe z will be in the mood to barter barter must Zeromus, I have come to bargain. <laughs> I like that reference. 
and I've actually lived that, you know, um, on certain seeds where um, I, I wasn't quite prepared and lost over and over and over. But in, in oh, yeah. this version, he didn't tell me to release him. He just he just kept beating me over and over. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Zeromus is uh, much hardier than Dormammu was. Dormammu's like, oh, I'm tired of this. And Zeromus doesn't care. Zeromus will just keep beating you. But Step Lively uh, will go into the Zeromus fight a little after 2.02. Again, a very respectable time. Yeah, and, and I do believe Step did do 28 out of 28 here. Yeah, Step did everything. Uh, uh, which I... Uh, Klopfer did as well. No, Klopfer did not. Klopfer uh, never tangled with that Luge, so never got that Luka key. Yep, still 26 out of 28 there. And 28 out of 28, just over two hours, is very respectable for these flags. Yeah, like we said, uh, Step Lively shown us a lot of skill, uh, a lot of gumption as well. Uh, this is going to be a challenging Z fight, uh, but uh, we'll see how Step Lively uh, takes it uh her hp a little uh troubling uh she's going to have to take care to uh make sure that any damage gets patched up do you find it all troubling that um she cursed the admins yeah that's um you know, sometimes the admins just need a taste of their own medicine. Well, look at that foresight with that, uh, throws the veil up and the counter nuke just bounces back. And we have Zerked, Zerked, uh, Rosa and Kane also. Very nice, uh, should get, uh, her fight off to a good start. And, you know, I'm not saying any particular admins should be cursed. All I'm saying is one particular admin keeps uh, rolling me seeds that are very, very mean. No names named. None need to be. They know who they are. So let's see if we get... Um... I wonder if we see a nerf here by Fu. Yeah, the first Big Bang uh, was nerfed, but uh, but even a nerfed Big Bang, uh, that HP will still uh, leak out a little bit and uh, start to get a little worrisome. That's a pretty solid nuke there, ne nearly 5,000 from Cursed Fu. But that Cure 3 is uh, not going to get it done. That Kane doing a bunch of damage a swing. Gotta feel good. But once again, uh, Fu just doesn't have a ton of HP to uh, draw from and needs refilled. Similarly, we're seeing um, that bottom character being an either one uh, chemist for Fu. Yeah, every Fu needs a needs an assistant of some kind, whether an edge or a forum. We'll see how powerful the second Big Bang is. It's pretty it's pretty light for Clover. And Step Lively going to attempt to nuke that, throw the crystal on. The counter nuke goes against Porum, and Porum goes down. And I think Step Lively is going to try and ride it out. And that might have been a fake shake there. 
Ooh, a fake shake. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go to uh, nerve this one too. We what we don't want to see is are the admins to take a counter nuke. That goes against Kane. Kane can stand it. The, the the Big Bang might take him out, but we'll we'll still be a standing party. He does have that adamant armor, and he survived. Just enough. Very good. All right. We're right on the razor's edge here. And right into Medio. Needs a dodge. Gets a dodge. Kane dodges. Yep, Except Mr. finally Three. hold out here. I think we got it with that Cure 3. That Cure 3 comes out. Kane swinging again. Another Medio. Boo can't dodge Kane it, and dodges. it's all up to Kane. And Kane what does it. What a fight. What a fight. GG you stuff. see the power of gumption. Steph Lively gets through that Z fight. Comes in second place with a, uh, and we'll get the official time here, but we are joined by Step Lively. Step Lively, GG's. Thank you, thank you. So that was a, a heck of a Z fight. Uh, uh, walk us through your your uh, thoughts in preparing for the Z fight, and uh, once you got in there, um, it, it got a little tricky at some points, but you uh, managed it with gusto. Yeah, my, my plan was very solid, which was to have Poor make sure that Fu had MP. I totally forgot that I moved my Ether 2s to the top of my list. So he would have had MP a lot longer, a lot faster if I found my Ether 2s. Well, as it turned out, he had just enough. Um, you ran an incredible race there. Um, tell us about uh, Luge, what you were thinking, uh, like, uh, what strategies, uh, what, what kind of considerations were you having going into that fight? So uh, the main consideration is I normally fade Fey March, but I'm already there. And if there's something behind Luge, I'm going to regret not trying it then. And I was fairly confident that with my Star Veils that I could get through it, it would be a little slow. But at least it might give me an edge over Klopfer, who I knew was a better runner than I am. So I know I have to take risks if I'm going to have any shot. That particular one didn't pay out, and at that point, I pretty much knew that if Klopfer didn't also take it, then I was not going to win, but there's nothing I could do at that point. Yeah, we were admiring that that line of thought there. That was really heads up. And really, um, the prep and the confidence to take the Wyvern before it was really impressive as well. Well, I knew I had RA arrows, and I knew I could get RA1, so I was like, all right. All right, I can do that. Yeah, you showed a, a lot of gumption uh, throughout the seed uh, with the uh, with the, the impressive fight against Odin, um, with uh, your knowledge of the game to take care of uh, the dolls. Um, how do you feel like you've uh, grown throughout the tournament uh, in in, uh, in in racing? I, I definitely learned a lot. Um, most of the strats I've been using so far are ones that I knew, but hadn't practiced a whole lot. So it's it's um, having the confidence to know it going into the fight rather than having to reset out of fights and try again and try again. Um, I think that is one of the ways in which I really have grown throughout this tournament is not wiping two bosses very much anymore. And that is very exciting for me to not have to take boss spots two and three times to get through them. So that is that is a huge takeaway for me from this tournament. Yeah, and again, you did amazing. Uh, represented Pink Puffs well, represented Gaia Hat well. Uh, a lot of things did go in that seed uh, ways I know that you would enjoy. You, you found and equipped a Gaia Hat. GG. Yes, yes. Have Something to. that... 
something that I know you appreciate. Uh, you, the, our bra this group will now have the full spectrum of of uh, possible uh, uh, placements with five and zero, oh, four and one, three and two, two and three, um, and so on. And uh, you're commenting how you'd like that. Absolutely, it's it's the the, the symmetry, the just the orderliness. It makes me very happy. And Bay got to be MVP. Uh, he did. Way. Yes, he did. <laughs> well, um, what's the what's the biggest positive you're taking away from this tournament? I I definitely think the the positive is having done a tournament and um, feeling confident that uh, I will be able to participate in future tournaments as well both in the skill level side and growing in, in technical skill, but also on the life side, knowing that we can make it work in my household as well. So both of those are super exciting to me. So that means more tournaments in the future. Yeah, and I think you opened some eyes in this tournament. People will be watching out for you in future tournaments. Um, do you have any other well, uh, questions? That... I'm good. Well, uh, one of the biggest positives for us is getting to uh, see you race. So uh, thanks again for that. Uh, GG's and uh, a great tournament. And uh, we'll see you in the next one as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Launcher and Mike Mike for doing comms. Chasnan for doing our tracking. Bad Karma, you promised an evil seed and you delivered. So thank you for that. And I want to thank this whole community for being amazing and supportive and welcoming to folks jumping in on tournaments for the first time. Y'all are amazing. Thank you, Step Lively. Uh, GG's once again. And uh, Pink Puffs represent. Yeah, Pink Puffs. <laughs> Yeah, thanks again for a great race, Step, and uh, we will definitely be seeing you in the future. Uh, what do you think? Uh, let me ask one more question. Um, what What do you see yourself doing uh, uh, next in Free Enterprise? Uh, are you gonna try the ladder out at all? Uh, more PPO? Um, I'm hope I'm hoping that I can do the next season of uh, PPO. That is that is very family dependent because of when it falls in our evenings. Um, definitely will be doing more ladder, uh, have been doing some, but mostly SMS. We'll see if I, I, I try and branch out to things beyond SMS on the ladder and then just continuing, continuing the, the free enterprise life. Well, that sounds great. We'll, uh, watch out for you. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that is going to wrap us up for this evening once again klopfer uh finishes in third place in the gaia hack group will face either mike mike 34 or x pancras in the play-in race to determine the second spot from the gaia hack group uh we do want to remind you that uh tomorrow we have even more adamant cup action on at 7 p.m eastern on RPG Limit Break, the big stage, we've got Alisail versus Rowdy Roddy Sniper. And that is going to be a really exciting match. Um, also, the Dream Team comms of Inven and Night Dew are going to be on for that. You don't want to miss it. Uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern, Zyrak versus Batasia on the Free Enterprise channel. And at 9 p.m. Eastern, Mechalink versus John Burkhead on free enterprise 2 this channel right here so uh join us again tomorrow for uh more adam and cup action uh for uh tonight we're going to send you on over to soapbox gamer soapbox is doing an adam and cup practice async so if you were thinking of doing that async uh you might want to duck out now but if you want to uh join us and cheering on soapbox gamer we hope you will join us uh but do want to thank our restreamer bad karma our tracker Chazman. thank you again to uh mike mike 34 my co-commentator and uh until next time for all of us so long and thanks to sheep launcher as well uh enjoy everybody good night